have a go at this uh, wonderful photo that was shared on Inspirational Photos for Artists Facebook group um, by Art Critic. So thanks for that. We really appreciate it. That I think it's going to be a good, um, good uh, scene for oil painting. And I want to have try and get that moon to really look bright. So uh, let's give it a go. So I've got some vermilion orange here. Let's give that a go. And some white. So the other colours I've got here are cadmium yellow pale, uh, or it's called. Um, Yellow Primary, the, the one I buy in France here, you buy um, the Frank Paints, uh, but it's the same as Camion Yellow Pale. Uh, there's Iron Crimson, Burnt Umber. I've got some Prussian Blue. I'm going to see if that, how that's going to work for the sky. Give it a go. And some Sap Green. Quite interesting to use some sort of these muted colours. Uh, obviously, Vermilion Orange, Yellow Ochre, and um, Burnt Sienna. So, too pink, so let's just add a bit of yellow. Now oh, I haven't got a laminated photo, that's perfect. Um, I did print my photo, but I forgot to put it on best quality and it printed off you know, just a normal sheet. So actually very different colors. Um, quite like this sort of warm color, but I think the, the darker color on the higher quality print has more impact for the moon, that you know the darks bring out the light in there. I thought about perhaps using the, the colours down here, but they don't match up, so we'll just use that one. But, uh, the quality of your um, reference material makes a big difference to how your painting will look. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to spin this brush around and try and make a circle. You know, I toyed with the idea of doing sky first and then the moon on top that could still be a possibility but um i'll have a go at painting around it see what happens maybe i'll sort of tidy up afterwards so big brush for this large area have a go at mixing hiya asuka how are you right i shall carry on I'll just mute those. There we go. I shall have a go at mixing on the, the palette. I could, the sky looks slightly more red at the top here, so I'm going to start with some Lazarian Crimson. It might just be the, the printer, but uh, it looks okay, so let's try that. Obviously, the Lazarian Crimson is very transparent. Let's try this Russian blue. That's way too dark. But let's lighten it with a little bit of white. Let's see what that does. So too blue. So what I need to do is make it more yellow. And because I've got such a large area to work on here, that I'm quite happy to mix on the um, canvas here. If it was a smaller area, I'd perhaps play safe and mix elsewhere. But uh, a bit more white, I think. Just do a little test, see where we are. So it's too dark in tone. But I don't want to use yellow because I don't want it to go green. But I can perhaps see a bit of red in there as well. Maybe that's my colour there, maybe. Let's give it a go. So more red. More red still. Still more red. I'm using a nice big brush here to cover this area. Pretty good. Still probably needs to be a bit more red. But uh, the tonal value is what's important. If I get it um, slightly wrong in colour, it's not the end of the world. But what I do need is for this to be quite dark for it to um, have the right effect. But uh, some of this red is showing in here, which is quite nice. It's Russian blue, a bit of that yellow. Let's try some yellow ochre in there. Now there's several ways you can arrive at your colour, and you know maybe it'll just give a different effect. But um, it's such a large area. If it's just painted a flat colour, it's not going to have you know, much to look at. So, 
Two green. Let's try some brown in there. So too dark in tone and perhaps needs to steer to red a little bit. And if I just put on the, the normal colours I put on there, I could still get to this colour. But, um, you know, when people ask what colours do I use, you know, as long as you've got a good range of colours, perhaps with the primary colours, it, obviously primary colours in there, you'll be able to paint most scenes. All right. Half the painting will be done very quickly. Uh, a bit more careful around the, uh, the moon. Uh, a little bit of that, um, this tone is coming through, which is okay. That's um, going to bring a bit of warmth through there. And this was done probably 12 months ago, so it's it's very dry. So let's just have a go, trying to keep that a circle. Doesn't have to be perfect, but. And I've probably made it slightly bigger than I wanted to, because I know I'm probably going to make it smaller. And the reason why I didn't just paint the whole sky first and then do the sun over it, or the moon over it, should I say, um, because obviously I'm painting out a Prima all in one go, this blue would cause a problem okay. and hopefully that should look fairly bright um, if I start on a white canvas that probably would look a little bit brighter but not happy with that as it is so there's a little bit of um, detail on the moon so I'm just going to roll that brush just to suggest that Maybe just a touch of yellow, a bit of white. And it seems to be more light at the top here. Be careful I don't fiddle with it too much. Right. I'll call that done on the uh, done there. So the rooftop. It actually looks pretty much the same colour as the um, the sky. So obviously that's just reflecting the the sky, and uh, on the uh, the lighter version, it's doing the same. So I know I've got that colour here, and I know how did I arrive at that colour? Can't remember, but I know if I just keep going until it looks about right, and uh, what I can do is. Paint some of that into there. Take a bit of that colour from the sky. So it might look too dark at the moment, but uh, when I put the uh, dark tree tops around it, this will seem much lighter. But uh, if we do a little test, possibly a little bit on the right side. Or too too much saturation, so I've just put a little bit of brown in there just to desaturate that. And I'll put all the detail on afterwards, so just get a flat colour on there. It's, it's very deceptive that when you um you know that this would look like almost white and you know an amateur would perhaps put white on there, but you know if we put a bit of um I have a knife somewhere else. The end of the brush will do. If I put some white on here, you know, it's nowhere near white. Nowhere on this uh, reference picture should I be using white paint anywhere at all. So uh, it will seem way too dark, but it needs to be. So let's go for mixing the, the end wall here. Well, actually, probably better to do this one first, the front wall, because it's a little bit lighter in tone. So we'll start with white. Take some of this stuff here, because it looks cream to me. But, uh, 
maybe a bit of brown. And we can do a little test to brown. So just add a bit of white. Perfect. So it looks brown, but you know, there it looks white. And so it's so deceptive. And that's probably what catches out most new painters, I think, that um, it's just so difficult to see these colors and the tonal values. That's why it's you know, so valuable to use that uh, method to just check your color. And I'll just take some of this leftover blue, put it into there, which will just darken that ever so slightly. In there, spotlight, and just do a little test. Go a little bit darker. A scene like this will take effect when you put all these uh, the darks in. But I uh, shall paint the uh, the buildings first. And then I'll put in the uh, trees around the back, the, the houses. So in with a bit of brown, bit of that Prussian blue, just to darken that even a bit further. More red. And these, you know, you can just be a guide the colours that uh, we can veer, veer off a little bit to paint wherever you like. So that sharp edge there is quite important. And it's just building up the scene. There's some more brown. There. And I'll put all the windows on afterwards. You know, those little final details that I'd like to just paint shapes first, big shapes, then down to medium sized shapes, and then finally the, the small shapes. So that blue and the brown makes a nice dark. So this side of the building is a little bit darker. Maybe not as dark as that. is a little bit more towards blue. And it's so handy just to be able to do the little test. They're all very much greys in this scene. But uh, we'll make it very sort of natural looking. So we've got a barn door there. And you know we can simplify this. We don't have to put all those details in. Another brush, oh. brown again, there's a, a mound of something there, I'll maybe add that on afterwards if feel we need it, so it might not, so let's make a black, blue in the brown work in there so let's have a go at putting these trees in so back to a slightly larger brush this is about number size four so i've got some uh Payne's gray here i'm going to try some Payne's gray i haven't used this for years Payne's gray but uh, let's give it a go so normally I mix linseed oil in with all of these, but it depends on the paint. You know, I find that these are frank actually come out quite oily. So quite often they won't need a little bit stiffer than I would normally have, but be fine. But what I'll probably do is I'll uh, put some of that paint into a jar and mix some linseed oil in. So it's all buttery like these. I, I prefer that. 
So Payne's grey on its own, not particularly nice, but uh, let's add a bit of yellow to it and see what it does. Nice. So these trees are very dark. I'll see the moon is going coming up, so I'll see it's uh, sun's gone down. To make it slightly more interesting, I'll just dip into some different colours, maybe a bit of Russian blue down here, a touch of yellow, a bit of red, and sharp edge along there. Just to bring that over slightly. The ed your edges play a big part. You know, we've got a, a hard hard edge there. End up with a little bit of a soft edge above. But that's fine. We'll blend here, but we've just using the tonal values. You know, they're very close in tonal value, so you know, it'd be difficult to see where the uh, the, the trees start and the, uh, the top of the building finishes. But here, where there's a, a Higher contrast, you know, we'll be able to see where that building is in the trees. Let's try some of sap green. And for the tops of the trees, I'm just going to leave a mark that uh, could be a tree. Let's try and make it as abstract as possible at the top there, not just a straight line. Hopefully, got some interesting effects going on there with the different colours I'm using. And there are some autumn colours in there, some oranges, so I'll have a go at putting some of those in. Back to the Prussian blue. Stronger contrast, dark in there. A bit of green, maybe a touch of yellow ochre. Now, don't be afraid to experiment. You know these painting. You no, know, you're learning. Idle time to just try different color combinations. You know, I found that yellow ochre and some of the blues make nice greens. You know, the experiment. That paints grey. Nice strong dark here. Try and maybe sort out that angle better. But don't mind if it's not perfect. It's a loose painting. My excuse. Carry on with the theme of just trying some different colours in there. Let's get some of that orange. Roll that brush about, give the illusion that trees and whatever else in there. Nice and dark over this side again. Although there was a painting underneath this painting, you can't see it anymore. It's uh, disappeared, and maybe one day it might be X-rayed. Unlikely, but you never know. I quite like the idea of those warm autumn colours. Fine, just suggest those. A little bit more interesting.
go with that. That looks okay. Um, now we've got some warmer colours down here. So let's go with that vermilion orange. Let's use it up. The yellow ochre. See where does that bring us? Do a little test. Far off. Maybe a little bit darker. Put that blue. And it's all very dark, these colours. But if I go, don't go dark enough, this won't seem bright. You know, that the moon really needs to uh, to pop. Right. Change that colour up a little bit. Brush on its side, quite loaded up now, this brush. So connect that up. into these buildings a little bit. So this is the, the tall grass off in the distance. Perhaps a fence or something there behind that one, but I'm just going to leave that out. And then there's a dark. There's a shadow between these two areas. Nice big dollop of red, quite warm here. A bit lighter than that, so yellow, some of that red. Really loading that brush up, nice thick paint. So don't mind having some thicker paint at the front here, which will oops, make it look like it's closer to us. And quite happy to leave some of this um, under painting or you know, the stain to come through here, adding a little bit of sparkle to the scene. And I'm using these vertical brush strokes, off in different angles, make a bit of red, spotlight my camera. Uh, hello Rob. Uh, Nice and warm in the foreground here. So that's mixing on the, the canvas. So there's obviously a lot of detail in there here with all these lumps of mud and so on, the freshly ploughed field. But, uh, and just suggest all that with the brushwork. And mix on the canvas, I think, is a good method for this painting. I'm just picking up lumps and lumps of that vermilion orange, uh, which will unify the painting because I've got it in places over here as well. And I had a quick look at the um, color wheel, which I just dropped. Just to see where the colour is um, appearing on here, which is about here. So the complementary across the colour wheel obviously is going to be orange. So it's uh, you know the orange here is going to work well with that uh, that blue. I just need a bit of detail now. So, smaller brush. This is probably number two round. And we'll get some of that brown. So red into that. Let's just do a little test. Very good. So nicely loaded up brush. So this is, I assume, sort of corrugated iron. The roof on here. So just drag the brush across. And maybe try and keep it as abstract as possible. 
like uniform in the uh, the photo reference, but. Uh, And I don't mind that line there being broken a little bit and blended into those trees. It just adds a bit of connection. Probably. Probably enough. And uh, let's use some of that Payne's grey. Bit of Russian blue. Bit red. Nice dark. Bit more brown. All this is a round brush. If I just put it that way and flatten it, I should be able to put that dark in along the eaves there. Probably have to just keep reloading that brush. A little bit of detail maybe on that line of that barn. And I don't mind the um, side of this building. Not having any detail in there. Let's just bring it over there a little bit. I've possibly not got the the angle of that particularly well, but um, could be needs to come down a bit more. But I think I'll leave it rather than try and mess about with it. That uh, probably just me being a little bit picky. Darker oh, that barn door there. Could do maybe is just have a window with a little in there on the side there. So it's just these few little bits of detail. And that's how I'll put these windows in. Just load up the brush. Doesn't matter if it's not a perfect square. In actual fact, it'll look better if it's It's not. Russian blue and the grey, bit of brown in there, just. Get that dark in there. A few darks in there. I'll just roll that brush. Put some abstract marks in there. Works better with the larger brush that did. Let's just mine is, is there. Let's just a bit of connection. Longer grass at the base of that barn. Oh, no. Let's have a go with the uh, telegraph pole, which I think I'll put. Here, so it was a uh, yellow ochre and a bit of white. Bit of orange in there. So, uh, there. Probably good, not a good idea to put it center in there because that's going to cause an issue so maybe just slightly over that side not particularly straight but that's it done uh, 
how I gotta where it go. Do and uh, we'll have a go at putting that uh, line across there. Got a bit of linseed oil in one of these. Is that lind? Yeah, a bit of linseed. Yeah, linseed oil to make it a little bit more fluid. Give it a go. With the brush. Do just the one line if you wanted to. Practice. Something like that. Very well. Do a good job of that. Luckily, with oil paint, we can fix it. A little bit thinner, I think we'll lose a little bit of it as well. And you know, we can decide, actually, is it better with just one, maybe? You know, I've only done two because there's two in the photo. Probably okay maybe just make it pass through the moon yeah evidently picked up a bit of that moon color and she looks quite good so i'm gonna put a little bit there I'll just step back from it just to have a look to see does anything obvious stand out to what it needs. We wouldn't hurt to put the pile of wood there, but uh, we can do that. We're putting dark against the, the light there. And it just adds a bit of interest to make the viewer think what's there. That's as, probably as much detail as that would need. So I quite like putting the to, the idea of putting the cranes in, um, but maybe you know, let's try it. Always uh, rub it out if uh, if it's a problem. And we had them uh, flying over our house yesterday. I, I did a Took a quick little um, photo, well, filmed them coming over, heading uh, south. But um, they eventually sort of make a uh, an arrow shape. They were sort of flying around in circles, just sort of getting together, and then uh, off they go. That's why I quite liked this scene because it was um, made me think of those. For some reason, I want them flying that way, but uh, stick with it. So they are going to be literally blobs. I'll probably probably the most difficult part of the painting. Have a go with my mull stick. I could probably see myself just rubbing them all out. It looks good in the photo. I can imagine them all uh, to paint is another thing. I get that arrow look. One who's in charge up on the head. Very 
stragglers at the back. Smaller ones. Step back, see what that looks like. The scene looks fine with or without, so quite happy um, I'll leave them in. But um, just spotted, there's a little bit of light off in the distance across that field, which might actually benefit. And I think that's possibly a fence or something. But, uh, just put it in for the sake of it, and then I'll call that a day, I think. I know this will be one of those things when I edit the video. I'll probably say to myself, why did you do that? It wasn't necessary, but more. Nice a bit of blue in the scene there. Start to see other things then. There's actually a bit of a green hedge there as well. The, probably the trickiest part of painting is knowing when to actually finish it. But, All these things here you've got to have know is it actually benefiting the painting is it necessary that bit probably wasn't maybe slightly bigger tree there orange same with a That bit of that, that moonlight catching some of those long blades of grass. Well, let's um, pop it in a frame and then we'll see uh, what that looks like. We call that done, I think. So there we go. The object was to make the moon look nice and bright. Um, and I've achieved that by having these very muted dark colours around it. And uh, I think the method of painting it worked OK. But uh, there's several ways you could have done it. Um, but very simple, basic shapes, but um, quite effective. I've not really done, uh, I think, a, a night painting like that before. So uh, quite good fun. So uh, we'll probably do some more of those. So I hope you enjoyed that. Thanks. For Thanks for those of you who joined me live um, on Patreon, and uh, it was good to see you. And um, if you're watching the replay, give us a comment and uh, let me know what you think, and I'll see you on the next video.